Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today, we want to uh, take a deep dive inside of the Navigator plugin and how we can navigate between pages. So as you can see here already, I prepared a little dummy for us, and we want to achieve that we can navigate from screen to screen. So let's get started. All right, so first of all, thank you for all your support in the last days. And as you can see, my whole setup has changed a little bit. We can see now the emulator much better. We have a bit more overview in the screen. I hope you can still read everything. And one of my special things that I'm very proud of is we can see now my shortcuts that I press. So you are immediately with me and can directly join me in the adventure of using shortcuts from now on. And from now on, uh, you can see them directly, so I will not always explain them, only if you have a special interest in Windows, but as always, you can look the um, Every Shortcut Count series that I already prepared, there you find more. All right, but now we start. Cool, so what do we want to achieve? We have here our main .dart where we have a login screen, as you can see already on the right side. It just contains a basic username, password, which are currently just dummy fields that you can see that it is a login screen. And what we want to achieve is inside of here that whenever we click on that button that we navigate to a next screen. So for example, we want to navigate from, um, from the login screen to the lobby screen. And from the lobby, uh, lobby screen, we want to go to the game screen. <clears throat> okay, so how do we do that? We have two possibilities for the whole thing. I will explain today just one, and this is navigator.push uh, navigator and navigator.pop. All right, so what we want to achieve is we want to click here, and when we are clicking on the no login screen, we want to navigate. For that, we have the navigator object, and with navigator.push, we are able to push another um, another um, view on the stack on top of it. And if we have another view, we push it on that top again. So we create a stack of different views. And this has a disadvantage because if we want to go one screen back, we just say pop and take the top layer and take it away. And if we pop again, we take another layer away and so on and so forth. Cool. <clears throat> but now we want to use the push command for now. And if I use the push command, I can write here context. And now we have to provide so-called route, in that case, a material page route. And the material page route is just another widget as we know it already. And it is part of the page route. Uh, system and you can read all the nice documentation if you jump into the page.dart but for now it is enough that we know we can navigate with this page route and as you see it's getting yellowish again because it has and this is something very interesting it has a required parameter so I go back for now and inside of that required parameter I can add that and it wants a builder function and as you see that builder function provides us a context that we can use, but we don't need that actually. And now it makes us curly braces. But because we want just to navigate to a next page, we don't actually need to write all that return and then give in a lobby screen, for example. So but just for now, I will do it, but we will refactor that in a second. So now we have that builder function. As you see, it's getting very crowded with a lot of spaces and enters. But Interesting enough, if I press now the login button, I will get navigated to the lobby screen. That is amazing because that is exactly what we want, right? So, and if you checked up here, there is that little arrow. And the funny thing or the good thing of Flutter material is that it automatically understands that another layer has put on top of the stack and we are able to pop it. And with that pop, we can just execute this click here and coming back to our screen. Uh, yeah, there's just a little bit of uh, problems with the overflow because um, if the keyboard is coming in currently, there is a little problem there. But as you see, I already changed that uh, image to a flexible, so it's getting smaller, uh, so it's a bit more responsive. Not perfectly, but still. Okay, so now we have the possibility to come from our login screen to our lobby screen. So hmm, how do we come now from our lobby screen to the next screen? Well, actually, we do exactly the same again, right? We say navigator.push, 
we give it a context and then we say that we want to uh, have a material page route and this material page route needs a builder which takes a context and now instead of writing a, a, a body for that function I just make a fat arrow and this fat arrow goes to the game screen. So what does this fat arrow does? This fat arrow says more or less we want to return everything that comes in the next line immediately without creating anything else. So that means we don't have to write code or surrounding it. The only thing that we want to do is returning immediately the one line that happens inside here. It's always just possible if you have one line of code that you want to execute. All right. So we managed it. We have one statement executed. And I let me refactor the uh, login screen also, because here we have to return. So we remove that curly braces and here, and we return, uh, remove the return. And for that, we give the fed arrow. Cool. And with that, everything is a bit shorter and cleaner. All right. So now we can remove that to do and also that print statement. And what I can do is I can now press login and I can press start the game. And as you see, we get navigated through the different pages and always we have the possibility up here with the arrow. But what if we don't want the arrow, for example? Hmm. What can we do then? We could say something like pop push. And instead of push, we can also say push replacement. And what it does, it does is it replaces the page on the stack. So it takes one away and put another one on top of it. And with that, we can see if I go here again, and I'm now, I did that now in the login screen. I removed that for now. Uh, in the lobby screen, so I can log in. And if I press now start the game, it should replace, you see, um, the login screen stays, of course, on, uh, underneath of it because we replace the one that is on top of it. So what we see here is I start the game, but if I go back now in the game screen, we are landing on the login screen. So login, lobby, game screen, and then back to the lobby immediately. All right, so we did that. So, and what is if I want to have a bit more control and I want to say, if I am in the gaming screen, I want to push, uh, I want to go one level back again. So for that, we have the possibility to, I create for now a raised button and I create the on pressed method. And now we have the possibility to create a navigator and say, instead of push, we will pop this time. And pop is really what it says. It just takes the top level of the navigator stack out. So we pop the context and that's it. So let's give that raised button a color. Voila. Okay, so now if I press, uh, I created now quickly a raised button. And if I click now that raise button with the function navigator.pop, we will see that we immediately jump back to the login screen. All right, so now we can push and pop a navigation to the stack. But what if we have already an existing stack and we want to um, push something back without to push replace that we say, okay, we have pushed the login screen we, uh, from the login screen, the lobby screen, we push from the lobby screen to the game screen. And now we still want to go back to the login screen by circumstances, for example. We could say in the game screen, we want to pop, but we want to pop until something happens. And now we get, um, if we take a look into pop until, we see we get a route predicate. And a route predicate is just a function that returns a Boolean and it contains a route. And what we want to do now with that information is we want to get the route and we want to return something immediately if the route dot is first for our case. So if this is the first route that exists in our stack, we want to make sure that this is the last one uh, when we uh, pop. You can, of course, create your own predicate for that. So if you have some special circumstances, if you have a lot of uh, different views and you want to just go to the middle of these or something like that, 
can all do in this predicate. So it is pretty mighty. And if I press now back to the login screen, you can see the stack is knowing that I want to go to the first page and it does the same thing like before. All right, so the navigator contains a stack with different views on top of each other. So each layer on, uh, on top of each layer. So now we have to pop until, right? And we check here, route is first. So every route inside of the stack takes its own level. And now what happens if uh, in pop until is the following. It goes to the uh, top layer and asks it, are you now the first route inside of the stack? Which is, is not, so the game screen is taken off, it's popped. Below that, there is the lobby screen, which gets also popped because it's not the first route. The last route is the login route on the stack. And that one is the last one, which will not be popped. And so this is what happens here with is first. All right, guys, thank you that you joined me again on this Navigator journey. It was amazing. And as always, if you want to reach out to me, please on Twitter use the hashtag Flutter Explained. It would be amazing. And on the right, uh, this time it's on the left. As you know, everything changed, right? On the left, you can see now our nice little application. And uh, you will find all the source codes, of course, in uh, GitHub as always. Thank you for joining me on this adventure for the navigation. As always, on the right side, this right side, you find the subscription button and on top of me you find the two videos that you are interested in. It would be amazing if you reach out on me on Twitter with the hashtag Flutter Explained. And as always, thanks for joining me and till tomorrow. See ya!